But then the funny thing about this is that now, after all that fucking hullabaloo, Denim Tears, Tremaine Emery, they've opened their own flagship store. So was this all on purpose? Was this all a ploy to drum up fucking attention to, you know, um, get some sympathy and victim payola bucks out there or essentially to just get some much needed attention because after all of that fucking mess, they open a store. Now, I don't think that's true because stores obviously are long in the making. No one's assuming that off the back of all that hype, he suddenly decided to fucking do that shit. No, but it's interesting that now all of a sudden the store's opened and, um, yeah, the conversation has changed. <laughs> the conversation has changed. And now he seems to be completely happy about that. So it's close to GQ. It features a really cool image of a biker guy wearing the newest released um, denim tear stuff that looks fucking incredible. It's all leather. That that jacket looks crazy with a fur and a collar. It's fucking bussing. The headline from GQ says, Tremaine Emery is set to open his first denim tears flagship store in NYC. So business is definitely booming because you don't open stores when you don't have money. You open stores and you've got some money and you want to tell an interesting story. You you feel like the only way to do it is by having your clothes. Oh my God, Jeff Staples still out here chatting shit about these pigeon dunks. Fucking hell. He's, that, that is a grifter of all grifters, mate. One hit one, the machine, bro. He squeezed the life out of that fucking pigeon dunk story, innit? Absolute. Anyway, whatever. Um, if ever there was somebody that had only one beat, that is a guy. Um, anyway, continues. The article, courtesy of GQ, just days after his much publicized split from Supreme, Tremaine Emery has lifted the lid on the major moves for Denim Tears. Um, the label was founded in 2019. Today, Emery has unveiled in full the third blockbuster Denim Tears at Louis Vuitton collection, uh, sorry, Louis Vuitton, Levi's, and announced plans to open his brand's inaugural brick and mortar store in New York, which he'll preview via one day pop up for his new collab on Saturday. So, one day pop up with Levi's, but it's a, obviously a retail store going forward crazy isn't it so you're going to see the the quantities of denim tears probably increase and it's just probably going to get a little bit bait sooner rather than later so you're probably gonna have to i'm interested to know how he's going to try to because i think that's how v loan has managed to stay somewhat limited because you know he doesn't have an online store you know i, I think it's done like it's done like random drops right barry does like random drops um, there's no online store, no physical store. That's how he kind of keeps the, li the numbers limited and it kind of keeps the demand high. But then in tears, if they open stores and, you know, start to have their stuff sold in other stores, it's going to definitely dilute the brand in some respects. Obviously, it's going to, you know, it's going to increase their bottom line and the money's in the bank account, but it's not going to be as cool as it is now it's probably at its coolest maybe it's at its coolest maybe a couple of years ago but maybe it's at its coolest coolest now and it's probably going to get way more popular and then soon there's going to be people buying it that you don't want to be associated with it's going to get cool and you're going to get lame or maybe just designs will get a bit stale and you have to change everything about it but i'm not too sure um i still think this cotton reef design is going to be something he can kind of rest on forever this is like his louis vuitton monogram personally i think this is gonna this is gonna age well but I'm interested to see how he does develop over the years. It says, last week, the fashion world was rocked by the news Emery had left his post of Supreme. We heard that. This new day, the Levi's collaboration, collection, sorry. Meanwhile, is a riveting ode, um, ode or ode to the black biker culture, heavily influenced by photographer Martin Dixon's 2000 book called Brooklyn Kings, New York City uh, Black Riders. I'm actually trying to buy that. That actually sounds like an interesting book. I'm actually going to try and see if I can purchase that on the old Amazons. It's $50. Shit. Okay, cool. Man, I have to see it. I've never heard of this book before. This is pretty cool. Um, so it says here, I have a fascination with black bike culture as for as long as I can remember. Yeah, me too. I remember watching, Um, my first thing about it was watching, uh, what's that fucking TV series with the biker gang? And I went to Bean one and I started researching Hell's Angels and shit and finding out they don't like black people. And then finding out there, was, there were other fucking MCs around that were race by race, which is awful, really, to be honest. But it's still quite cool to kind of do a bit of a deep dive and find out all these different um, MCs from around the world and shit with different factions. It was quite cool. The controversies around them, the crime and shit, the shootouts, blah, blah, blah. Love it all. Um, he says, I, I've had a fascination with black biker culture for as long as I can remember. Emery said in a statement about his collaboration, there is an outsider sense, a danger, a pride, a respect, and a commitment to freedom and a defiance against conformity to a polite doctrine, which I love. Big up him. Oh, look at that with the pharaoh in the back. We were kings. That's a fucking lovely v v v a vest. I like the fact that it's got a little slit here. There's a little triangle cut here on the back of the bike of, on the leather vest. That's fucking cool, man. Um, the I'm assuming that's probably functional too for when you're sitting down on your bike so that your vest doesn't bunch up or kind of, you know, pinch it on your waist. 
that's actually a really cool little detail there. It continues. Um, the line includes an all leather version of the Type 3 jacket and a 501 jeans that highlighted the past denim tears capsules um, printed with the brand's signature cotton reef graphic, which Emery devised as an ode to the iconic leather wearers um, like Miles Davis and Sly Stallone. The powerful characters in almost vulgar displays of achievement. There's an all, there's also a leather vest adorned with a bold King Tut portrait, which Emery says just evoked perfectly the mythical, heroic, and fantastic otherness that forms a back identity. The collection, which ranges in price from fifty to nine hundred dollars, Jesus, um, is rounded out by the strikingly embroidered Western denim shirt and jeans and matching denim hat and badass leather belt, a graphic tee, and a rucksack. I would have loved if they did a bike. Actually, I wonder if they did a bike. Let's actually go to the store. I wonder if they did a bike. That'd be pretty cool if they did like an actual bike to go with it as well that is sold. That'd be fucking sick. Let's see what they got available. Is it available online or is it just when something goes in store? Um, I'm assuming the $900 thing was maybe the leather vest. That's my um, immediate sort of reaction. Maybe the leather vest was a $900 item. Let's see when this fucking website loads on my fucking slow computer. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Nothing. Oh, there you go. It's finally loaded. Let's go to the shop. Let's see what they're saying here, because I'm curious to see what thing in particular um, is nine hundred dollars. I'm gonna say it's a leather vest. That's my initial feeling and hunt. Is the leather fucking vest was the nine hundred dollar item? But let's see as it loads up. It's taking absolute ages because my fucking um, computer is the slowest thing in the world. Let's go to shop. Bear with me a second and let's see what they say. I don't think it's available yet on there, so it's not available on the shop just yet. Um, but it's I guess available in store if you want to see it yourself, but it's not available on their online store. Is it gonna yeah, so, yeah, so it's not available on the online store. You have to obviously see it on their uh, in store retail. But yeah, they got some cool stuff at the moment. I love this green um this uh type two vintage green setup. This looks fucking beautiful. Especially if you see some of the models wearing it. Um so is this um flannel um shirt. It's fucking awesome patchwork. The shorts look really cool as well. Sweatpants. The boxer shorts I love. The t-shirts are cool. So all of it's pretty nice. I'm not going to lie. So, you know, he's not going to be hurting for peas anytime soon. So maybe it was a good thing the whole um, thing happened. Oh, this is the shirt that Skepta was wearing. I think that's a collaboration with our legacy, I think. This hockey jersey with the black... Um, mighty mesh on it and shit it look, it, was it is it look, what is that is that is that a scorpion is that a thing i don't know what that actually looks like um but yeah that shirt if i'm not mistaken is a our legacy thing i think it might be that two-pack thing and i don't think we have a leather vest here but yeah cool no no idea on where that thing is but i'm sure it's probably gonna be available in the store let's go back to the gq article um, you see some pictures of the items here in lieu of the regular models um, the collaboration lookbook stars members of the black bite community it says we shot them in places that they live um, their lives this was done as much as that respect for them as for the people to capture the rawness you see people wearing it I, I've always I, I always like having models I always have, have like having clothing stuff like this on real quote-unquote models i think it just bangs better to be fair um supreme have done a good job of that recently especially with some of their footwear collaborations they actually get the skaters to wear them wear test them and shit and then they take pictures of them for the lookbook um or for the pictures on a new site which just makes them look better because they've been worn and they've been used for the actual function so you get to see what they look like and it just sells them it just makes them look more legit instead of having pristine sort of like sneaker pictures of somebody jumping from a puddle or something or doing that fucking pointy toe thing um yeah anyway continue the entire them tears levi's um, line will be available on saturday in soho um an address that will be familiar to nyc street veterans most recently occupied by stussy's manhattan outpost the storefront was original location for the landmark medswear boutique union oh wow that's a great story so it was originally the union store wow man the original small tiny union store that james jebbia used to work out of back in the day which was founded by co uh, supreme co-founder james jebbia and now operates in los angeles under the ownership of chris gibbs that's pretty cool if i'm not mistaken as well when it comes to the union um oh no i think i, I got it mistaken one of the pieces of law and street there is that aaron a aaron bondaroff or aaron the don of a new york thing and former supreme staff and obviously supreme model and shit when he founded a New York thing, I think the legend is the original brand name he had was Undefeated. And then he swapped the brand with the guy, I think his name is James Bond or something, that runs Undefeated, the white guy that looks like fucking, um, he looks like a UFC fighter. I think they swapped names, I think. There was a trade in names. So I think he gave the guy an uh, Undefeated and he got a New York thing. I think that was how it went. But I don't know how that ties with Union. 
Oh, I think, sorry. I think the Chris Gibbs story is that he took over Union by what? Did he ask James Jebbia and he had, like, what was it? I forgot, there was some story around that. I think Chris Gibbs used to work there and then he kind of got the keys to his place because, I don't know, there's some sort of law behind it, but who knows. Um, I really wanted to, uh, I really wanted to work at Union. Yeah, I really wanted to work at Hideout back in the day, but the guys, they were fucking cunts, like the older white dudes. It's funny though, the Hideout, same thing. One of our best street wrestlers in London, had to close for I don't know why maybe because they didn't do our business but when they first when we first were going in there they hated young people coming into store then I think they realized the business was kind of failing and all of a sudden I remember going in there one day and then seeing all these fucking 18 year olds I was like huh it was strange it was like a one moment it was like all these white dudes that didn't want to help you when you're in the store and if you ask them any questions about pricing they'd get annoyed kind of like supreme owners and shit and then one day we walked in and they started to hire all these cool kids thinking they were going to revive, hide out and make the kids want to shop there. But by that time it was too late. They already had a bad reputation. Um, but yeah, I think my dream of working in street stores completely de- you know, went away when I started to read more about the founders. And then I wanted to be James Jebbia. I wanted to be Nigo. I wanted to be Aaron Bondaroff and shit. Those are the guys I looked up to, people that were actually doing things instead of just being a consumer and shit. My idea was to go in that the more direction. So um, yeah. It continues. I really wanted to work at Union. Emery told GQ last year, recalling that he used to hang around the shop most days after after work in the mid 2000s. Opening Denim Tears flagship store in the same location, the brand. He said in a statement, "It's a full circle moment for sure." After his weekend's pop up, the collection will drop at Denim Tears on December 12th, followed by a global launch on December 14th. Okay, it's a good way to drop it. First in store, live in hand, then online, then on Levi's overall. So we'll be able to see it later on when it drops. But there are some images of the actual store courtesy of them tears of tremaine's own instagram account actually there's actually some pictures of the stuff as well as you can see there the leather vest um the jeans look fucking sick are those jeans or is that like a was like a bag what is that thing on the top left here is that like a bag thing here yeah I think, okay, oh, it's a little bag okay cool i thought these were jeans that'd be pretty sick so there's a leather vest a t-shirt some hats a belt western shirt you know set that that western type of shirt thing with the same jeans that looks a bit dieselish and this obviously leather piece that's absolutely banging 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 so all of it looks fucking phenomenal and obviously the other stuff we already saw on the website as well so big up him for that all of that's available in the store that no wonder the headlines around the block look at all this shit man fucking hell um and then there's also pictures of the store itself you've got the sign here which is funny kind of in the shape of the supreme box logo that kind of like rectangle shape, which has got the um, the pan the the pan African or pan American flag, right? That David Hammond's obviously uh, popularized. That looks fucking sick, really really cool. And then you've got an image here of the storefront logo, which has been painted actually. Interesting enough, um, this has that been hand painted or something? That'd be cool if the, that was the case. That looks really good to be fair. Um, as 